Hey everyone, the name is Eric Thor and today we're talking about the nature of intuition and intuitive overwhelm. And the question, a single question I found myself surprised by. How come so many intuitives feel overwhelmed and confused by their intuition? Their dominant or second function of their stack. How come so many intuitive types, people that are extremely creative, feel almost overwhelmed, anxious, unsettled by what they see as possible. How can this be? What I've come to learn is we all have a favorable style of engaging in intuition. We all have a natural orientation, a way that we prefer to engage and understand our intuitive processing. And when we step outside of this, or when we become surprised, or when things happen that throw us off from this path, we feel lost and sure and anxious about our intuition. Yeah, to step into the shadows is kind of to jump into the dark. To go through your normal functions as an introvert or a judging type into your shadow functions, the extroverted and the perceiving processes of intuition is to be, to find yourself in the dark in a world that is a little scary, a little overwhelming, a little difficult and beyond your control. Far too chaotic, far too unpredictable for your base understanding. Now let's take a step back here. Let's talk about what makes intuitives become overwhelmed. And let's first start with the vastness of the world of today. Realize that the world we live in today is so much bigger than the world we had 100 or 200 years ago. Realize how we've gone from just a few professions to many, to millions of professions, possible job choices, education routes, career choices. Realize how we've gone from living maybe 20 to 30 years to 100 years. It's possible to live up to 120 years. What the hell will you do with all that time? Yeah, there is so many options. Go to a grocery store. There are thousands of products. And it's overwhelming to say the least. There are, however, processes in our mind that can help us deal with this. There are ways to help reclaim control, to reclaim order, to reclaim stability and your footing in all of this as all of this is happening. And what I'm talking about is finding you how your intuition works and the shape and the form and direction and the process of your intuition. And through it finding confidence, finding peace of mind, finding stability and finding power and here's the thing all of these intuitives that i watch all of these intuitives that i've served all of them have grand ideas great dreams amazing potential but so much untapped potential and here i see amazing writers that stare themselves blindly at how little they have yet to create and achieve great artists that are staring themselves blind at what they have not created yet what they have not reached yet Great travelers that feel blinded by how few countries they have seen, how little they have seen, how little they know. Intuitives that realize how young they are and how little they know and how much they have yet to learn. Intuitives, take a step back, find where you are, come back to yourself, to where you live, to where you stand, to who you are. And realize your base approach. I'm understanding, I am of the understanding that we all have a self. We all have our own body and sometimes we can trick ourselves into thinking we are other people, that we are the things happening across the other side of the globe, that we are standing somewhere else than we are, but then, then we are standing here. These are the hands we were given, these are the eyes we have been offered and this is what we can see, this is what we can deal with. And that's okay. And that's okay, that's not selfish, that's nothing wrong with realizing you have a self, a personal ego, a personal body to honor and to move from. It is only from recognizing this ego that we can do something for other people. If we do not see this ego, if we do not use this body, we cannot do anything. We cannot help other people telepathically, at least not uh, according to mainstream opinion. And uh, 
So we have to start in ourselves. And even if you believe in the transcendence of ego, understand that the transcendence of ego starts in the ego and that there is an approach that begins here that you have to move through to reach your final destination, be that nirvana or enlightenment or wherever you are, see yourself headed. Now, there are four core different intuitives, advisors, executives, explorers and leaders I've talked about this before and this is your base temperament the temperament of your intuition realize that your intuition is a temper it has a mood a base mindset a base approach now in summary the leader is the kind of lone wave that prefers to move on a singular course towards a singular vision or destination the leader finds themselves upset and angry and annoyed and frustrated and slightly frightened by all the changes, all the chaos happening in the world, all the upsets, all the constant clashes, the people they run into, the waves they hit against and collide against and the things that risk throwing them off their path or the, off their destination. There is the explorer, which is kind of like the surfer, the person that jumps on this wave and sees where that leads. And when that wave is starting to fade, they jump to the new one. And the person that finds themselves afraid of standing alone in a still sea with no waves to jump next to, being trapped, being imprisoned, having nowhere to go next, no new opportunity, no new potential, feeling stuck. No matter what your temperament is, what you will realize is what your ideal state is, what your comfort state is, where intuition is in your control and when intuition is in the control of, in the hands of other people. When there are no waves to jump at as an explorer, you are only standing still on the sea at the top of the ocean, looking around you, seeing nothing, waiting for the weather to change, for someone to change your future, to give you some control back. When you are a singular wave that has hit against other waves and that has been thrown off destination into a chaotic and unruly sea, then you have lost your control. You are in the middle of a storm. You're being thrown in directions and you're only trying to hang on. You're only trying to straggle on, find some way to turn your ship around so that you can keep on moving forward. And I hope that in all of this you're recognizing, you're starting to recognize your own approach and your own temperament. And you're starting to understand and to respect it rather than to second guess it. Because I see a great deal of second guessing of our intuition. I see intuitives that believe they have to think or be intuitive or creative in a certain way. I see explorers that believe that this second guess, their ability to jump onto new waves. They think, I should be my own wave, I should get my own idea, I should be the own, my own power, I should have my own energy. But what you're forgetting is your power, yourself, is all these waves and all these patterns and all these connections and opportunities. You, yourself, is this self that is jumping from wave to wave. You are the sum experience of what you have learned, what you have observed, what you have experienced and what you have allowed yourself to feel and to experience. What I see in leaders is this idea that you should compromise your path or your vision, that you should turn around and adjust your boat and your destination to wherever the wind is blowing next. That you are being stupid in chasing after your vision. That you should not chase after your vision. That you should not move towards your destination. That you should simply grab what's available to you. And in all of this, what I see is a wave that is moving in circles and never getting enough energy and never getting enough momentum to accomplish anything. A wave that is constantly moving in line with the wind, but never fast enough to reach any destination. So let's talk again about intuition and what we've been taught in school. We've been taught the wrong things. We've been taught how to think, how to learn, and how to act. We've been taught what is okay and what is not okay, and all of those things are norms and practices fed to you by teachers of different processing styles and different ideas, parents that did not get how you think, 
parents and friends and family and students sitting next to you that did well using their own strategies. Now, we can't just copy the strategies of other people blindly. We can't just do what others do and think it will work for us. Success is not found in copying successful people. Success has to be found in yourself and in your unique approach in how you like to do things. Now let's talk about the executives and advisors. Let's talk about the ENFJs and the ENTJs. The way I see it, ENFJs and ENTJs are the shepherds of the sea and of the world of ideas and potential. They are the people converging and getting all ideas together in one basket, getting all the waves they see around them together towards that purpose, that vision, towards that ground. And I also see the executives creating the ground where waves can come, creating this eye of the storm, the center point where all ideas can converge around. Executives are the masters of the waves, the masters of the sea, the people that organize and orchestrate the ocean and the current on the flow of ideas and that put ideas whose time has come to the challenge to, uh, to achieve themselves, to achieve their potential. And let's talk about the advisors. The advisors are the people that stand just outside the storm, looking towards the storm, observing all the waves and all the currents, learning about the different ideas around them, learning about the different options, learning about the different potential, seeing all the different possibilities. The advisors are the people that are always aware of how the storm is moving, how it will move, and what will happen next. The advisors always know where they need to be and what, what time they need to be there. The advisors always know how the storm is going to change, how the winds are going to change, how the waters are going to evolve over time. And that's this ability, is this storm tracking, this idea tracking, it's this vision tracking, it's insight tracking, it's being able to gain and access awareness about the shape and the current and the flow of the entire world and to understand the essence of everything happening around you. Now, think about when you feel a loss of control and think about what you do that gets you to second guess this awareness. Think about how as an INP, as an advisor, you can start looking at, you can start getting caught up in the center in all the drama and all the tension and all the conflict and all the waves crashing against each other and how you can lose perspective in all of that. Think about, there you see, sure, everyone is heading in that direction. Uh, and everyone seems so passionate about that direction. Everyone seems to think they're going there. And how you see that, no, they're not going to get there. You know, the winds are changing. Things are happening. Things are starting to come up. Realize as an advisor that you are the person that will first note this when the flows are about to change, when something is about to emerge that is going to throw people off their course. And be that storm tracker, be that advisor, be that person that uses your intuition to guide the flow of ideas and to teach and under help people understand this world of potential that we live in. Intuitive overwhelm is when we see ideas and potential in ways that we cannot deal with where we see insight in ways that we cannot understand. And here's something important for an extrovert and an intuitive type. Uh, if you're an extrovert and if you're an intuitive, introvert intuition is going to appear too abstract. And all the ideas that you get on your own, that you're thinking about, they're going to appear fruitless. They're going to appear difficult, vague, and hard to get. You're not going to know how to translate that into opportunity. You're not going to be able to figure out how to make that, how to turn that, uh, that egg into an omelette. You're not going to be able to see how to transform what it is that you see inside of you into potential. That's the key issue where all ENFPs and ENTJs get stuck. They have this 
personal idea or they want to find this personal idea and they get almost obsessive starting to overthink this idea and starting to wait for it to emerge where is it when is my idea gonna come when am I am I gonna get this grand insight that everyone else seems to get so naturally and then there's this overthinking this obsessive thinking in all of this as you're getting it you might you might even get this insight but you might not even trust it to begin with because it's uh not for you it's not meant for you it's not uh, where you start you start in the opportunities that you see before you the waves that you see emerging the patterns that you're seeing starting to come before you for an introvert it's uh, thinking and confusing your and lacking intuitive boundaries I see introverted intuitives like INFPs and INFJs dwell so much on other people's potential and what other people can achieve. I see them talking about what other people could become. You were the chosen one. You, you were supposed to do this and that. I had this great vision or idea for you, what you were going to do. It's that placing of responsibility on other people. It's that uh, thinking that your ideas are the ideas of other people. Your vision is the vision of another person. When in reality, it's the vision of you. You are the chosen one you're waiting for. You are the vision whose time has come. You are the idea that's meant to happen. And giving that idea to other people, in giving that idea to other people, you're only giving up your power and you're only exposing yourself to anxiety and fear as you see the other people struggle, as you, you're only feeling upset and angry as you see them abandoning your purpose, the idea that you want to come to pass, the vision that you want to see happen. Yeah, what I see in uh, intuitive and judging types is this desire to constantly adjust your course to what is most opportune in each moment. And in doing so, you're spinning around in circles, just going around in circles, never getting enough momentum. Okay, this is qu quite quick. I should do this slowly. Uh, never getting enough momentum to actually achieve your vision. And what I see in MP is it's this uh, desire to... Um, stay too long in a wave that is starting to ebb out. It's this desire to hold on to an idea or to a platform or to a potential that's over. Seeing this, uh, you have this idea, you have this potential, you have this wave you're surfing on, but you're starting to lose energy and interest in it, but you're still somewhat obsessed on remaining on this wave, even though you see other things that are gonna happen, other potential emerging. And soon uh, finding yourself seeing fewer and fewer waves around you, feeling fewer opportunities, fewer options, and feeling more and more that you don't know where to jump, where everything, every distance is too far away, every wave is too far away for you to reach. No. Intuition is a strange thing and it's hard to master, even if you are a dominant intuitive, it's really hard to master it. And uh, I think it really requires a lifetime of experience, missed opportunities, missed potential, insight that led nowhere, visions that did not come to pass, to realize the importance of acting and trusting what you see, trusting your ideas and ideals, and turning them into power, turning them into a passion, and realizing it's not so much about what is objectively the best idea, what is objectively what other people do to achieve intuition successfully, but it's about what you enjoy, what you like, and what you find meaningful. Thank you all for watching this video, and I hope to watch more of myself tomorrow. Wait, what? Seriously, sometimes I just have no idea how to wrap up these videos.